Here's what the Bible says about love. This is fun. It's the love checkup. It says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. Love does not love evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. That's pretty powerful, but I'm going to read it to you in the personal conviction translation. You guys got to bring this up for me. I'm have ready for this. You take out the word love and you put your name in it. Watch how convicting this is. Carl, oh, Carl is patient. Carl is kind. Carl does not envy. Carl does not boast. Carl's not proud. Carl does not dishonor others. Carl's not self-seeking. Carl's not easily angered. Carl keeps no records of wrong, even when they're... Okay, Carl always protects. He always trusts. He always hopes. He always perseveres. Carl never fails. It's impossible, right? Unless you're outside the will of God. If you're in the will of God, walking with Jesus, the Bible says if you remain in me and I in you, we cannot be separated. So all of that leads you to one place, more of Jesus. So when you put yourself in there and you start reading, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not keep a record. The only way you can love people like Jesus, love them is if you know him better and better every single day. My prayer for an amazing church like this, if people are like, yeah, they're awesome, but they love people. We've been criticized in New York for loving people too much. Guilty. Someone's like, how can somebody like that call your church home? Best music to a pastor's ears. Come on up here, team. We're going to finish with this. Is this helping anybody in here? I hope so. Always only Jesus. I wanted to give you something that you could uh, do something with when you leave here. We always say if, if we're making people stand and clap on Sunday, but no one's moving on Monday, we're wasting our time. So I pray that, yeah, you're getting this now, but I pray tomorrow that when you have, you're, you're in traffic, I don't know if you have traffic in Montana, maybe a cow crosses the road and you're mad or whatever. <laughs> when you would normally wave at someone in traffic, it's a different wave. When you're just about to hold that grudge again, go back to your time with Jesus where you remember what God did for you there's no way you can hold it against them last little point it's like one point only Jesus gives you your worth and you should always always remember that simple as it gets only Jesus gives you your worth so you should always always remember that I want you to hear me loud and clear because I live in a city that Although there's different you know, factors that go into New York and Montana, the same thing is true about our country. We live in a society that gives you worth according to maybe what you do or the things you've accumulated. Only Jesus looks at people and says, you have worth because I say so. Doesn't matter if you've lost your job. Doesn't matter if you've been humiliated. Doesn't matter if you have failure all around you. Only Jesus gives you your worth. And you should always, always remember that. Because there might come a moment where things change in your life, and if your worth is in anything other than Jesus, you're in trouble. But a Christian who gets everything they need from heaven and heaven alone can stand strong when everything else is shaky. And I'm going to give you a, a look into what I believe should be the confidence of every Christian. Last scripture, honestly. John 13, verse 21. And Jesus, again, is talking about him going to the cross, him dying eventually. And there's just a huge moment here where he drops a bomb. And in this moment, you get maybe the identity of a, a follower of Jesus that we need to glean from. It says this, after he said all these things, Jesus was visibly upset. And then he told them, he said, one of you is going to betray me. And the disciples looked around at one another, wondering who on earth was Jesus talking about? One of the disciples, the one Jesus loved dearly, was reclining against him with his head on his shoulder. Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus who he might be talking about. So being the closest, he said, Master, who? Just want to freeze for a moment and go back to this verse that says, one of the disciples, the one Jesus loved dearly, was reclining against him with his head on his shoulder. This is unbelievable, y'all. 
We have people that are afraid of God, that don't know their worth to the point where they're ashamed and even weird about coming to church. But here you have a disciple that was so content and so secure that he was literally chilling on the Savior of the world. To make matters even funnier, the guy who was like the one that Jesus loved the most, he wrote that about himself. Can you imagine having the kind of worth and esteem that is so supernatural that you describe yourself like this guy did as the one that Jesus loved? This is preposterous. Can you imagine showing up at work going, hey, I'm the one that Jesus loves. Can you imagine if you're single, if this, that was your Facebook profile? It's me, the one that Jesus loves. Can you imagine walking around with the kind of confidence where you wake up in the morning tomorrow and despite all the sin, despite all the stuff you haven't conquered yet, where you wake up and you go, here I am again. I'm the one that Jesus loves. Woo. Can you imagine seeing Christians that can lose a job, lose somebody, have something go wrong, but they are so locked and loaded with the always only Jesus concept where nothing can move them except God himself. Do you have that in you, fresh life, to be able to get so close to Jesus that no matter what somebody else says, no matter what you see in the mirror, it does not change the reality that Jesus loves people so much that he wants to walk with you and he wants to talk with you and he will never leave you or forsake you. Do you have that kind of security? I pray that you do. Here's why this voice from heaven, which is one of love, which is one of peace. If you can't hear it, there are a lot of other voices in our society that are going to tell you how to feel. So when you fail, if it's not Jesus giving you the voice, it's going to be your job. It's going to be some bad relationship. And to make matters even worse, we live in a fatherless society. So in Brooklyn, New York, for instance, 85% of young people are growing up without a father especially problematic with young women because psychologists will tell you a young girl gets 90% of her identity from the voice of her father. So now you put that on a heavenly level. If people don't have the voice of a father on this planet and they don't hear from the voice of the father from above, how in the world will people get their identity? Where are they going to get their worth from? MTV, culture, where you can never be enough, you can never do enough. So we have an entire generation settling for horrible things because they do not know what they're worth. You have Christians coming in and out of church and they've heard it from the pastor, but they haven't heard it from Jesus. So at the end of the day, there comes a point where there is a disconnection because they don't know any better. So you see people that are living lives they should never be living in relationships they should never have because they do not know what they are worth. I remember when this thing lit up for me, I went home to see some friends I haven't seen in a long time. And I got a call that said, hey, a couple of your high school friends are down at this restaurant slash bar. You know, go see them. If, if a bar frustrates you, it was a restaurant. If it doesn't, it was a bar. <laughs> and I remember walking into this place and uh, seeing people I haven't seen in like 12 years. And I, I sat down. I saw two friends from across the way. And they saw me and they were like, Carl. And they ran over. I could tell that they were inebriated. They were drunk and high because people that are drunk just stumble. But people who are drunk and high, they kind of float like so they, they floated over me, and they were like, they were like, Carl, what happened to you, man? We're like, what, what's your, what happened? I mean, we heard that you became a priest. And I'm like, nah, not, not a priest. I'm definitely a Christian. And the one friend was so high or drunk where he could only repeat, like, every third word that my other friend was saying. So he's like, it's a priest, you know, and he would say sentences, and he would repeat. And he was like, man, that's great. Good to hear what you're doing, but you know what we've been doing since we graduated from high school? You know what we've been doing, man? We've been living the dream. The other guy's like, just living the dream. So we have been living the dream. He's like, man, I've been committing crimes, living with criminals, haven't got caught once, living the dream. He said, I got so much money in my bank account, I don't even know what to do with it all. Just living the dream. He said, I know so many women. I can walk into any bar in this city and get you anybody you want. I'm just living the dream. I'm just living the dream, and I can feel the pain in his voice because anybody who has ever walked with Jesus for one second knows that life, it is not the dream, it is a nightmare. But if people don't know they are worth more, if people don't know that God has called them to something better, we will continue to see people go down a road they should never go. It's going to take churches like yours, people like you, to let people know God has called you to something greater. It's got to start here before we ever take it to these streets.
I'm going to pray for you, but I want to leave you with this. Can you remember this? Friend to friend, sweating, yelling preacher to calm, sophisticated Christians. Seasons change, but the Savior's, Savior never does. Say it again so I get that right. I said Savior. It's like I believe in Buddha, Muhammad. <laughs> Seasons change, but the Savior never does. Remember this when you're in a season like your pastors walk through. Because we have a lot of Christians that are getting fooled by their season. Where if things are going good, they're good. But if things are going bad, they're going, where's God? He doesn't change in the bad season. He's still perfect. Don't look around your life and gauge how you're doing with Jesus because you see problems or you see challenge. In fact, if you don't see problems and you don't see challenge, you might want to check the pulse of your faith. But if we can be the kind of Christians that realize rain or shine, it's only Jesus. Win or lose, it's only Jesus. We are the only people that will literally exit a season in the middle of something bad. Nobody else does this in any other sphere of life. We realize that everything has its seasons. Like, who doesn't love summer? I love summer. Until you sit in a car and you touch a steering wheel and you burn your hand. But no one just pieces out on summer. You're like, that's part of it. I mean, who loves fall? Fall is great. The air is awesome. You get to wear your cool sweater, you know. The leaves are falling, but it's a bummer to have to rake those leaves. But no one just hates fall. You realize it's a part of the journey. Who loves winter? I do. Winter's great until you're on a New York City subway and it's so cold, you wonder if there is a God. But people realize this is part of the journey. Who loves spring? I love spring. Spring is awesome. Until you get hit with so many allergies, you realize there is no medicine on planet Earth that can stop you from what's coming in this air. That's just part of of the journey, yet we have Christians that will go through something and forget that Jesus didn't change when you were sick, he's still the healer. Jesus didn't change when you felt empty, he's still the one you gotta go to. Some of you need to hear it tonight. It might be raining on you, but Jesus is still your shelter. It might not look great, but he is still perfect. It might look like it's over, but it's not because Jesus never changes. Always only Jesus.